What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and we are doing another Madden 21 Fantasy Draft Rebuild. Keep on keeping on with the suggestions in the comments. Every single time I'm posting one of these videos, I'm getting like five to six different ideas that I'm adding onto the list, so I appreciate that guys, and I'm glad that you guys seem to be enjoying this series. Today we're going to be doing something that is uh, something, you know, I, I want to do it, I think it could be very interesting. And this draft is going to be made up of only backup players. Now, there's certain situations where it could be debatable if there's a backup player. Uh, there's certain situations where, uh, I have an example, like I kind of just did a quick run through and I was looking at the defensive tackles. There's three defensive tackles on the Washington football team. You have Matt Ioannidis, who's D-tackle one, and the defensive tackle two gets a little cloudy between John Allen and Deron Payne. So I had John Allen as my D-tackle three. He was going to be my top pick. I went to the draft board, he was gone, but Deron Payne was still there. So in situations like that, I'll take a liberty in determining and letting Madden and this Madden draft being the deciding factor if there's a toss-up, if that guy's a backup or if, you know not. Uh, I'll, I'll let that kind of open up. Same thing goes for uh, running backs. I have a situation where who's really running back to between Philip Lindsay or Melvin Gordon. And if one of those guys happens to go before the other and one is still left on our draft board, I will make the assumption that Madden determines that player to be a backup. But for most of it, it's going to be guys that are very, very much clear and obvious backup players because that's the point of the experiment. Can a team built up primarily backup players be rebuilt into a Super Bowl champion? So what better team than the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that has used the most backup players over the last couple years to you know, try and have a go at it? So without further ado, let's build this team. And my number one pick, I think, is pound for pound the best backup player in the NFL, and that is Kareem Hunt, who is most often RB2 behind Nick Chubb there in Cleveland. He's absolutely the type of player that we can kind of build around. Here comes my inexperience in understanding where players tend to go in these drafts because I'm just going to grab my quarterback right away. And I did this video a couple weeks ago. We would have an obvious backup quarterback, top one here, into a tag of Iloa, but he's now been promoted to the starter. For the means, we could go Fitzpatrick or Jameis Winston, but I think the best backup quarterback for us to utilize is a quarterback on the, well actually, I didn't know Hertz was ahead of him, but he has the dev trait, and that is Jordan Luff, quarterback two, firmly behind Aaron Rodgers, who's playing like an MVP this year, so we will grab Jordan Love to hopefully be our franchise quarterback, just kind of get that one out of the way. Outside of this, now we can start looking pretty much anywhere, I'm going to go to tight end, there's two really, really high end tight ends that I want to try and land on my team. First up is Dallas Goddard of the Philadelphia Eagles, who has an 82 star dev. And the second tight end, I should be able to wait just a little bit later to uh, to go and get him. Uh, while we're here in round four, I want to go to strong safety because I know he has a dev trait. And dev trait players seem to go higher than most. And that is CJ Gardner-Johnson. Florida Gator bias, but now is C uh, strong safety two behind Malcolm Jenkins there in New Orleans. So when, in, when I can get a backup player with a dev trait, I'm going to almost kind of prioritize that just a little bit. Uh, now that we're sitting here in round five, I want to go to defensive end and we're going to get D Ford, one of the highest rated death players. He's technically defensive end two, uh, left end two, however you want to say it on the San Francisco 49ers, very expensive. And it's not really the case because they just rotate so heavily, but it also kind of is the case. And we're going to stay at defensive end and get his partner in crime. And that's be Montez sweat 79 overall with a star dev in the fifth round. You know, young players like that just don't grow trees. It is a rebuild. We are going to be able to draft at certain positions. Like, there's not a lot of depth on the offensive line, not a lot of depth in the secondary. So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I already understood coming into this video that there was going to have to be a certain level of reliance on the draft. Let's bring in a second tight end here in OJ Howard. Uh, between him and Goddard, maybe we can even flex one of them to like a slot wide receiver, just trying to go BPA. Uh, defensive tackle, let's see who's there. Be it Duran Payne. Okay, well, I-9 is still there. Deron Payne is still there. I am looking for John Allen. And Jonathan Allen has been deemed, unless he has a terrible rating down here. Jonathan Allen has been deemed, I guess, the number one defensive tackle. So in this argument, we'll, we'll go and try to see, you know, look through that, that cloudy line. And we'll just say, sure, we'll get Deron Payne. D-tackle three, I suppose, in the eyes of Madden. And we are very much going to welcome on our team. I'm just going to do 10 rounds here, and then I'll be able to finish the draft off behind the scenes. I think now, um, look at my list. I got a little bit of a list. I think, is, does Rashawn Gary have a depth trade? 
that's somewhere I want to, I kind of want to take a little peek here. Rashawn Gary, do you have a dev? He's sitting on a normal. Does Drew Tranquil have a dev? He's sitting on a normal. Okay, those are all guys that I'm considering. Uh, I hmm, Is Terrell Burgess still available? Because he had a sneaky dev trait. Huh? Where's he a strong safety in this game? Nasir Adderley, depth. Ashton Davis is a depth player. Are you kidding me? Earl Burgess is gone? Oh, all right. oh, no, he's right there. See? See? The clock, clock almost struck midnight on that pick, but I was able to find Terrell Burgess. So we're gonna make our last pick here on the offensive line. Just grab him just for, just for the memes, just because I like him, just because there's some bias in there. And we are going to grab, uh, he must be classified as a right left tackle now, on the Philadelphia Eagles, from parts unknown, Jordan Mailata, 6'3", hidden death. Probably could wait a little bit longer, I just want to get him because I want to. So I'll finish up the rest of this draft and show you guys the team in just a second. So the draft has finished, and let's meet the team. There are 75 overall, 75 offense, 76 defense. That's about expected, I think. If you're like, give me the best backups, what do you think their overall would be if you put them all together? I'd say around 70, 75, somewhere in that range. So it's on par. Let's meet the team. So on the offensive line, we got Jordan Mailata with that you know nice little silver dev, nice little star dev. Matt Hennessy, the rookie of the Falcons. Bidash, the rookie of the Dallas Cowboys. Muti, the rookie of the Denver Broncos. And he surprisingly had a dev trait. That was awesome. And then we get DJ Fluker, who sits behind Ronnie Stanley on the Baltimore Ravens offensive line. Uh, as You know, that's a solid offensive line. Most of those guys are young outside of Fluker, so maybe we can grow and develop. And the depth behind them is, for the most part, rookies. Tight ends are stacked. We might have, like, one of the best tight end rooms in the NFL. Philly Goddard, OJ Howard, and Harrison Bryant, who was the Mackey winner. So he was the best tight end in college football last year, but just buried behind David Njoku and Austin Hooper on the Browns depth chart. So I'm really, really happy with our tight ends. At quarterback, we got Jordan Love and Dwayne Haskins Jr. Running back, we got Kareem Hunt, Justice Hill, Kalen Balazs, and Darrington Evans. So this is where I kind of missed a little bit. Uh, I, I kind of circled my big list here of players. Like, my biggest misses. I would have loved to get a Philip Lindsay, Leonard Fournette, Tony Pollard, Carrion Johnson kind of deal as RB2. But that's fine, because we can just make Kareem Hunt our lead back. At wide receiver, we got Kenny Stills, James Washington, Dante Pettis, John Ross with that speed, Paris Campbell with the speed. So we got a lot of speed and a lot of youth really outside of Kenny Stills. So there's some upside. Uh, in terms of wide receivers, I would have liked maybe to get a swing at Auden Tate. Andy Isabella could have been something. Demarcus Robinson, D.D. Westbrook. I think Auden Tate had a dev trade as well. But I'm happy with our room, man. We got some youth. We got some upside. And hopefully we can get a lot of these guys a second chance to really earn and develop themselves as legitimate starting caliber players. Flipping to the defense, uh, I think our defense might be stronger than our offense. I don't know. On the defensive front four here, we have Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Davon Hamilton, the rookie of Ohio State, out on uh, Steelers maybe? I think he's on Pittsburgh. And D Ford. Uh, beyond that, we got Terrell Lewis and Ben Banigou. And the rest of these guys pretty much are death. But when we could, we would go with rookies because they have some upside. Uh, we're making up the rest of the front seven. We have Blake Cashman, Malik Harrison, and Davion Taylor. So the rookie of the Eagles. Rookie of the Ravens and second-year player on the Jets. We also got Tanner Muse, Kiko Alonso. You know, again, kind of going the theme of rookies. The safety pairings, we have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Terrell Burgess. Also was able to bring in Ashton Davis, the rookie on the Jets, to add a little bit more depth. There's no injuries, but it could be a valuable trade piece a couple years in. And then the secondary, we have the veteran Jason Verrett, who is filling in right now on the 49ers, who are absolutely depleted. And he's been sensational. Now that he's healthy, it's never really been a question of talent with Jason Verrett. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Now he's staying healthy. He's very, very legit. I think he's a PFF darling so far this season. So we're happy to get him, even though in terms of upside, he's 29. He's probably peaked a little bit outside of that. Even though Reason Phillies are base team, still feels a little bit weird wanting Sidney Jones, but Sidney Jones is 24 74. It's. There still is a chance for him to kind of catch on here. We also have Marvell Tell of the Colts, Amik Robertson, the rookie on the Raiders, and Lonnie Johnson, or Isaiah Johnson, a second year player on the Raiders, I believe. He's on the Raiders or Texans. Can't remember the top of my head. And then on special teams, because there's no depth, I just grabbed whatever were the best available players sitting in free agency once the fantasy draft has concluded. So I get Daniel Carlson of the Raiders and Cam Johnson of the Philadelphia Eagles. So where do I feel this team is? 
I feel like they're pretty damn good, honestly. I think that I have no idea how Jordan Love actually plays this him. He could be cheesy, could be underwhelming. I don't know, but let's get into it. Year one, I feel like, you know, we're not heavy on the gameplay in these fantasy draft rebuilds because, I you know, I want to differentiate it between the realistic rebuilds and this. I kind of want to see what this team looks like, though, right at the gate. So we'll play this week one. Just, you know, I don't know, maybe just play the offense. I, I really just want to feel what Jordan Love plays like in Madden 21. And then we'll sit, we'll, you know, get into our traditional rebuild. But first, let's hop in at FedEx Field against football team. All right, we're going no huddle. Everyone's kind of gassed. Oh, there we go. Kenny Stills, big time grab. Putting us up in the goal to go situation. Oh, wide open. Kenny Stills, a veteran. Oh, almost breaks one. Huge catch. First and goal on the two. Let's let Justice Hill, the speedster. Let's see if the interior here, Mooty and company, can dominate the line of scrimmage and get our boy Justice Hill in. And he's it. And that's very much not Justice Hill. That's Kareem Hunt. I don't know why the play said Justice Hill. I'm not going crazy. You saw that too. But Kareem Hunt gets the first touchdown for our team of backups. What a toss. Jordan Love's perfect 8 of 8. Hits Kareem Hunt down deep. Eat the sack. Eat the sack. Kick the, kick the field goal. Oh, Kenny Stills. It's been a game just married with field goals. There we go. A little bit of excitement. Oh, there we go. Too easy. Really, 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 really well ran play. Kareem Hunt's second touchdown of the game. All right, we got a third and 10 down a touchdown. I tried simming out the second half, and uh, Jordan Love has two picks. I've yet to throw a pick as Jordan Love. He's felt generally fairly, uh, fairly effective when I've been under center, but not so much with the sim. But it doesn't matter if we can find a way to just to come in, help him out, get a dub. I do think that his confidence is taking a hit. His, his throws aren't as accurate. He's not as not as willing to uh, throw through contacts. Second and ten on the thirty-one. Your love. What are we doing? Play action. We got. We bit him. Throw it in front of him. Make him. Give him a chance. Third and ten. Same thing. Ooh. We could sneak this. Maybe we could sneak this up a little bit, Kareem Hunt. I'm Jordan Love, ice in your veins, bud. Ice in your veins, bud. Dallas Goddard takes it. We still got that timeout, man. We're on the three. Should have three more downs. Well, slants does look like a hell of a play to go to. I'm not going to disagree with Madden. Oh, we're... we're Stop the ball! Oh, it's not good. No, it's just... Uh... Oh, my God. It's on Dallas God. We're going to get pick six by D-tackle. Oh, thank Jesus. Derek Wolf. Oh, we're a young team, a team of backups. There's a reason why they're all backups. Surely it's only up from here, man. Surely they're only going to find a way to... Turn this season around and maximize it. Kenny Stills was an absolute beast. My one takeaway is Cream Hunt, even though he has very glitchy hair right there. Uh, and, and Kenny Stills were simply outstanding. Jordan Love, for the most part, 90% when I was controlling him, was very good as well. So we're here out of the bye, and we're 3-5. and five. It's not bad. I mean, I understand that we are the only team that had a handicap in the fantasy draft. The Giants football team and Cowboys could just go BPA. Uh, I, I think we're hanging on in there, man. We're hanging on in there. So let's look at some contracts here. Players that, I mean, we got to make a decision. Do we want them to, to stay on the team? Can they bounce? Um, I mean, obviously, we got some some really talented young players here. But I think for the most part, these guys can be gone. This, this is going to be just the, the class that frees up spots for our uh, for our, our college players that are going to be coming in. The rest, like, all these contracts are fairly, like, there's no cheap ones. Banigou wants like two million bucks a year. Like, there's nothing like we're getting stuff that's like, oh, we're only paying them like a hundred thousand bucks or, well, that's that's impossible. Like seven hundred k, eight hundred k, nine hundred k. None of those contracts exist. So, goodbye. 
So at the end of year one, eh, baby steps, seven and nine, last place in the East, but still seven wins. It's probably a little bit better than what I expected from our team. We had a bunch of hidden devs, and let's see what we got. So Muti came out as a star dev. Jordan Love came out as a star dev. And then on the defensive side, Terrell Burgess was a star dev, and I think that was it. So, I mean, it wasn't like we finessed and got some, you know, some sort of freak monster superstar X Factor or anything, but we have good young players on this team. Look at the stats here. Jordan Love, 3,900 yards, 31 touchdowns, 16 picks. I'll take that for a rookie. Those are really good rookie numbers. As long as that's not the norm. As long as he's not going to be a guy that struggles to get 30 and, and he continues to develop, continues to get better, I'll be happy with it. We got over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns for Kareem Hunt. Sensational for our first round pick. In the receiving room, over 1,000 yards for Dante Pettis. Saving his career. 9-10 and 10 for Philly Goddard. 8-5 and 5 for Kenny Stills. Almost 6-6. Six and six. For James Washington, my one argument would be maybe let's use Kareem Hunt a little bit more on the backfield. I think he has more to offer than just 200 yards through the air. Defensively, got over 100 tackles and three picks, Sidney Jones. 100 tackles, three picks, Blake Cashman. We got 13 and a half sacks, D Ford, 15 TFLs. May want to see a little bit better out of Montez Sweat, but I like seeing those numbers from D Ford. Four picks, Jason Verrett leading the team. Ashton Davis is a rookie free safety, also had three picks. All right. Hell of a young secondary. We could build on top of that. 24th offense in the NFL defensively. Should be better. 20th, marginally. Yearly awards MVP went to Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of the Patriots. Uh, offense play went to Jared Goff. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of Philadelphia Eagles. Jordan Love at number nine. Patrick Queen was your defensive player of the year on the Rams. D Ford here for us at nine. Offense rookie, they went to Jordan Love. Beautiful. Defensive rookie, they went to Patrick Queen. Ashton Davis at four. Burgess at 10. Best quarterback went to Cam Newton. He's the quarterback of the pay. Oh, that's definitely what the Dallas Cowboys need. They're just the most sim, cheesy quarterback in Madden 21. Awesome. Well, Jordan Love coming number eight for quarterbacks. Kareem at number three. McCaffrey's also on the Cowboys. All right, that's awesome. Fun, awesome, cool, sick. Can't wait for it. Awesome. Um, runner up for best D line was D4. JJ Watts on the Vikings. Blake Cashman, number seven for linebackers. Best DB went to Jay Alexander on the Cardinals. Red at number four, Sidney Jones at eight. So, I mean, we had some individual success. All in all, I said that was better than expected. So let's just get into the offseason and get into year two. As is per usual here in these rebuilds, first wave of free agency is uh, not good. There's, there's not much that I really want to pick from, so we'll just get right into the draft. All right, so for our draft recap here, I uh, went through the draft, just kind of buzzed right through it. Uh, because our team's so young, we didn't really need anything. I just went straight up BPA. We got a 75 corner at pick 12. Casey Pemberton at Tennessee Scheme Fit with that lovely normal dev trait. In the second round, we got a 75 center. Philip Green at a Penn State. Not necessarily a scheme fit, but improving the interior of that offensive line. Plus, at 6'5", 310. At least in Madden Dares, can pretty much play anywhere on the line. We got a 69 outside linebacker, a 66 guard, a 70 fullback, and tallest punter seemed to work out fairly well. A top 100 play here, Max Silvers out of Kansas. So we're here now for year two with the Philadelphia Eagles team of backups. 80 overall, looking at the offense, not a whole lot of changes. Our second round center, Green, will now be our starting center. The rest of the O-line will remain the same. Offensive skill position players also remain the same. No dev traits were to be had. I'm not shocked. I thought maybe there was a chance with Jordan Love getting rookie of the year that he could go up something, but... I mean, this he's just one hell of a Madden quarterback. I don't know what the viability is trading for him in your personal franchise. I don't know the scenarios, but if you can get your hands on him, man, like athletically, he's good enough. Arm talent-wise, he's good enough. And personally, if we can just get his awareness up off that 71, maybe he'll play better than the Sim. Defensively is where we had some dev traits. D Ford had an exceptional season. He went from a star to a superstar, which is good because probably along with Jason Verrett, they're the only two guys that I have any worry really about regression in this rebuild. Uh, Davion Taylor and Blake Cashman, both of our outside linebackers, went up dev trade. But I feel like in Madden 21, that's kind of a glitch right now. And if, like, if you're doing a, a franchise and you're a normal dev, or really just any dev, outside linebackers don't go up a dev trade, there's probably something wrong. So it's a solid team, and this team's only going to get better because of the age and the, and the youth of this squad. So hey, year two, I'm expecting to build off that 7-9 that we had last season. Dudes, going into the bye... I'll get out of the bye and just show you what's going on. Maybe this is the first time that I've been actually excited from what the Madden Sim has kind of done with that team. We're 8-1. and one. 
I don't know how we're eight and one. I don't know why we're eight and one, but like we're smoking them, and like Jordan Love and D Ford are just teeing off on teams. Like I want to, I want to get a sneak peek here. Jordan Love statistically got to be near the tops. Uh, top ten. I mean, the twenty to two is really, really good. But D Ford, let me see. Let, yeah, there we go. D Ford is absolutely killing it on pace to like break the side. D Ford's OP, everybody. Now the more you know. So we're eight and one. We'll spend these points. Let's look at contracts here. So last year, we're a little bit hesitant to really offer anyone. Now it's the next wave, and this is some of our young players of our starters. So we have Devon Hamilton here. Let's give him a four-year deal. We got Paris Campbell at wide out. Um, you know, that's somewhat reasonable, I suppose. Actually, I don't know, because we have so much depth that it's kind of a log jam there. Like, we're good at safety. Uh, Justice Hill at RB2 will probably, probably replace that. Like, I'm looking at this as... I mean, it's almost like, do I just want them? Like, like, I like Meek Robertson, but I don't really need him. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, maybe I'll wire just because I'm not 100% sure. You know, if D Ford retires, something like that, I want cover. I think Ashton Davis is a real good player, but look, he wants to get paid. We already have two starters there. Let me look at our wideouts. Like, am I going to be kind of shooting myself in the foot here if I don't resign Pettis? Because we still, Paris Campbell, sorry, we got Kenny still. No, we got a bunch of guys ahead of him. I mean, it's good. It, uh, no, let's save it. Let's save our money. Let's save our money because we got some expensive guys coming up year three, year four. I fucking hate this team. We were eight and one. We were eight and one. <sighs> um, all right. Well, statistically, Jordan Love is, you know, he's playing a little bit better than what we had. Kareem Hunt's still solid. Got it over a thousand yards. James Washington over a thousand yards. 11 touchdowns for Kenny Stills. Defensively, Cashman over 100 tackles. We have 15 sacks from D Ford. Couple picks, CJ Garner. Adam, fucking unreal, man. This game's so bad. What a free agent. Hopefully, I get you know get a corner here because Verrett's you know, regressed his way down. There's there's not much. You know, again, it's one of those things. Corner. If personal tip and trick. There's so many corners in Madden generate draft classes. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense having to extend them. Uh, I am gonna get goggles. Nerd, Rodrigo Blankenship as our kicker, channel legend. But other than that, I feel like, you know, I mean, we could look at RB2 here. Oh, I want to get him just because he's been such a savior to my fantasy team. We'll, we'll give James Robinson here, the Jacksonville Jaguars, an offer to be RB2 to Kareem Hunt. But other than that, though, we're good, man. We're good. All right, for our draft here, it was actually a pretty terrible draft. Uh, in terms of like what I had scouted, I pretty much simmed here after the fourth round. But we got a 73 middle linebacker, Chuck Claiborne. Just had some competition with Malik Harrison inside. Looks solid. Normal dev. We got a 71 normal dev corner, Bronson Sherwood out of South Florida. We got a 67 guard. We got a 68 middle linebacker, Alexander. A 69 corner, Harold Clemens. 65 free safety, no dev. We got a 63 running back, Rick Carmichael, no dev. And a 62 tackle. I did kind of whiff here. There was a D tackle I was looking at in the second round. I guarantee he's a beast. It was this guy, Antoine Carson. Ah, it's actually not that bad, 74. We only missed out on a normal death. Players that I had on my tab, I had a batch because that name was hilarious. I had uh, Zay McNeil as well, normal dev. What about the first round? I always just want to check this now because dev traits are so hard to come by. Players that I, I you know, Steve Nash, because I'm a Canadian, I thought about it, but we drafted a center last year. Because obviously that's a great Canadian basketball player. Um, all right, that was about it. It's just, you know, kind of a crappy draft to go on top of a team that just choked an 8-1 and one record. All right, year three for the Eagles. I just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break something. If we if we go eight and one, we start off like well above 500, like one of the best teams in the NFL, and we fall off yet again. There's going to be some heads are going to roll. Uh, a little bit of offense, nothing really has changed. Uh, we're definitely seeing the development of our players, our young players, but no one's really 
outside of Kenny Stills, at least offensively, is regressing. On the defensive side, old D Ford maintained his rating, which is very nice. Pemberton, our first round pick last year, is going to have a chance to start on the outside because Jason Verrett has regressed down quite a bit. Uh, and then the linebacker, Blake Cashman, went up a dev trade from a star to a superstar. I think it's less concerning in this case. Like sometimes you're worried when you see guys with like 40 tackles and stuff. He's been, you know, a misleading stat for linebackers is total tackles. Like Blake Martinez is awful, but he always has top tackles. But if you know, in, a, in relation to Madden, where you don't really have like the the covers numbers and stuff, I'm perfectly fine with a guy that's getting over 100 tackles and stuff like that every year, potentially going up a dev trade. It's a lot more realistic and less egregious than say when you have guys like look, Davion Taylor went up a dev trade last year. And he had 37 tackles. Like that's there's something wrong with that. At least if you're getting 100 plus. Sure, maybe you're a machine. You deserve to go up. Either way, though, optimism is high. That hey, if we start off very hot again, we won't crash and fall like we did last year. You can't do that back to back seasons, right? Either let's be awful or let's be good. No in between. Just lost by one point to an 0 and 7 Detroit team. So let me just let you take a guess how well we're playing. Good. Ah, we're shit. Three and six. Uh, contracts at the midway point as this is going to be an absolute wash of a year but we got to retain our best players so let's get Dante Pettis locked up on a three year Blake Cashman let's get him on a three year as well guys I want for the remainder of this rebuild um, Hennessy next up absolutely deserves to get paid starting guards been solid developing nicely should break up into the 80s sooner than later we'll come back to the table on him outside of that though it's not, uh, not no other like must haves I guess Tell's been solid at corner if you'll take that deal. Um, DJ Fluker, replaceable. John Ross. I mean, it's only at least 29. That's not a brutal contract if we'll take it. So there we go. Only one guy kind of rebuffed us here. And that's Matt Hennessy, and we'll be able to resign him next week. And to finish up year three. So we were like one and six. What were we? One and seven in the last eight last year. And in the last eight this year. We went two and <laughs> two and six. So we're th we cannot finish the season to save our lives. We can just it's simply ah, uh, it's annoying. I don't know. I don't know how to fix this. The only way to fix I, I don't know unless this this is just the way of the sim like telling us we're going a full five years. I mean, our team's still young enough. Like, we're not seeing any regression of Jordan Love. These guys are just slowly starting to get two, three, four overall points higher every year. So I guess there's just going to come that breaking point next year or year five that we're just, it's going to be undeniable that we, we should be winning a lot of these games. I mean, Jordan Love, 35, 36 total touchdowns with the five on the ground there. Good year from Kareem Hunt. We have 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns, Washington, nine and seven still, seven and seven Goddard. Defensively, over 100 tackles, 12 TFLs. For Blake Cashman, 10 sacks to Ron Payne, 8 for Montez Sweat. We must be getting pretty close to a 90, sitting there at an 89 overall. Three interceptions, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Probably could have done a little bit better. But overall, we have the number five offense. And the 22nd defense. Defense kind of let up. It's, it's very rare that you see a top five offense finishing with a five-win season. Russell Wilson of the Bengals is the MVP. I don't think we're going to see... Hey, Jordan Love's actually... Wow, Offensive Player of the Year. We might have just got him a dev trait. If he doesn't go with a dev trait, it's just going to be everything that's going on in this rebuild. Rick Carmichael is Offensive Rookie of the Year. I have no idea who that is. Claiborne, our middle linebacker's Defensive Rookie of the Year. James Washington was Wide Receiver of the Year. We, we actually might have a chance at some dev traits here. All right, maybe losing's the best thing. Because if we get up, you know, a new superstar quarterback... Couple dev traits on the offense, couple dev traits on the defense to be had. We're gonna be sitting pretty for year four. I don't know if you knew what his dev trade was before this, but it was a star. Offensive player of the year, no dev trade. What about this? Did we get one? Did we get lucky on our middle linebacker here? Chuck Claiborne made Malik Harrison expendable. He's still sitting at a normal. I guarantee, like Davion Taylor with forty tackles went up dev trade or something stupid like that. Uh, on the offense, James Washington went from a normal to a star. I'll take that. That's, I mean, beggars can't be true at this point. That is a huge dev trade, a huge win for our offense. Defensively, okay. So we had Deron Payne go from a star to a superstar. That's actually pretty solid. I mean, he had a hell of a year. 
I'm not angry about that. We had Chauncey Gardner-Johnson go from a star to a superstar. He had a very productive season, led the team in interceptions. I'm happy with that. Blake Cashman led the team in tackles, went from star uh, superstar to a superstar X-Factor. That's huge, our first X-Factor on the team. But does it all matter knowing that the most important player who deserved a dev trait did not get one? Well, we're going to find out in year four. At least Jordan Love's playing very well for us. So look at the free agents here. I do want to spend a little bit of money. So I'm looking at the top free agent. Is me Cole Hiredman, the speedster, formerly of the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, another guy borderline fits the, the, the identity of this team as a depth player because he's just, you know, is he technically, you know, a, a depth behind Sammy Watkins, behind Tyreek Hill, Demarcus Robinson's in there. So, I mean, he could be. But either way, I'll, I'll throw an offer on him, the top bid. Uh, looking at other positions here, I'm thinking at running back. There are some options here. DeAndre Swift could kind of be classified as a backup running back. Madison, backup running back, Fournette. However, I'm going to go Tony P just because I'm a huge fan of Tony Pollard. Anytime I have a chance to use him, I will grab it. Plus, I don't want anyone really taking any of Kareem Hunt's shine as he's been our best player. We need a tackle. We need a bit, someone to swing over the right tackle after letting DJ Fluker walk. Looking at the available players, I think it's you know, Cam Robinson. But Brand, I think Brandon Parker is actually a depth player. I can't tell you what team he plays for. But, like, the Brams, maybe? But either way, I don't think he's a starting tackle. He just developed really nicely. So, he, again, he fits the mantra of the team. So, we'll throw an offer in here on him. Maybe we'll give him a little bit more money. 375, almost two, almost 10 mil a year. That is a big contract. But we should be able to land all three of them. Hardman, Pollard, and Parker. That's a hell of a free agent period for us. Number five offense, second pick in the draft. Let's bring it to you live. Let's see what we got. Um, oh, I don't want a running back. I don't even really need to look there. Wide receiver, we did just bring in McCole Harbin. But is there any first rounders? Legit early first rounds. Jalen Burris, 4'3'7 speed, and he's six foot four. Well, we have a early top dog, lead dog here on the uh, the draft board here. We have late first rounder on the guard. Those are just so appealing when you see someone that's legit. Now, DN is definitely also a position to need. Mid-first rounder in the fourth round, though, gives us some luxury not having to go on one of these early players because it would be nice to have some cover for D Ford as he is our oldest player. Um, has a chance we're going to... Oh, that guy looks like... Deshaun Aver looks sensational. David Johnson. We have Danny Bernard. A lot of good players there. I don't think, given that fourth rounder, though, they, none of those guys should surpass... Are that freaky wide receiver that we have. Uh, D tackles, couple D tackles. I'm not overly worried. Linebackers, we're fine at linebackers. Secondary, we could use if there's like a legit can't miss corner player, but there's not. And we're good at safety. So yeah, let's grab that wide receiver, Jalen Burris, and then we'll grab that defensive end in the second round. So Jalen Burris, 6'4, 220 with 4'3 speed. If you know anything about scouting, you know 43 cone and 20 yard are the best and most important things for a wide receiver at the combine. This guy's immaculate all of them. This actually might be the best wide receiver player I have seen. And I picked, please, just, oh my God, he's gonna, he just don't have a normal depth trait. There's no way. There is no way, coming from a big school like Michigan, if this guy existed in real life with those skills, he would be a normal depth. And in the world of Madden, thank you, Lord baby Jesus, for not robbing me on that. Jalen Burris, 75, hidden dev, number seven to True Valley, getting him a pick two. How is 437, only 92 speed? I was firmly expecting that to be like 95, 94. Uh, but I mean, this is one hell of a player. 91 change of direction, 82 break tackle. You got catch and traffic, spec catch. Jesus Christ, what a monster. We got to get this guy on the field. All right, before we just auto sim this draft, let's get Kyle Parks, the edge rusher out of Clemson, potentially to be D Ford's successor. But he's just like a hell of a player. 74 normal, number 12 in true value, getting that at 34. Uh, looks like a solid athlete, well-rounded player. Nothing that's too dominant outside of that 81 power move, 78 pursuit. He's nice. He's a nice developmental player. So our draft recap, after we made those first two selects, like I said, I just super simmed it. We got a 69 outside linebacker from K-State, 64 tackles. Actually, not bad CPU drafting. 66 tight end, 65 left tackle. Kind of whiff there on the center, but Jalen Burris. I still, how does 437 equal that? But, not going to complain. That guy's still unreal. All right, so our squad for year four, which is quickly because we saw all our dev traits. We're an 85 overall, 85s across the board. On the offensive side, nothing really changes too much. We got Tony Pollard, 
as RB2. Uh, I don't know what's going on, why McCole Hardman is not our starting wide receiver, but McCole Hardman will be our starting wide receiver. James Washington will be wide receiver two. And Burris, I'm, I'm going to make him wide receiver three. Let's get him those reps over Dante Pettis. And even then, Dante Pettis, still, if you go four wide, that's the, hey, that's gonna only going to help Jordan Love. Uh, defensively, no other real changes. Everything else remains essentially the same. We saw the dev traits, and let's hope that everyone continues to play very, very well, especially Montez Sweat, D4, getting sacks, getting pressures. Deron Payne as well, coming off a double-digit sack season. Year four, Eagles. Let's not be the second-worst team in the NFL, please. It's coming on the bye in year four. Just remember the record in case things don't end up well. We're 6-2, and two, first place in the NFC East. Uh, as well as just general seeding, we are the number seven, well, tied for fifth. We're, we're tied for fifth, even though I don't know why Cincinnati's second was still only six wins. So in reality, we're like fourth best team in the NFL, a top five team. That's all you got to think about. Top five team. Hopefully we just don't suck our way out like a cheap whore and uh, fail to make the playoffs because that would be disappointing. But look at our contracts here. We got Deron Payne, three-year deal. Sure, been unreal. Montez Sweat, you've been on real as well. One hell of a player. Uh, Muti. Well, I don't know what... Is he on Denver? If he is on Denver, I mean, he was a guy that should have went way higher. He had injury concerns coming out of Fresno State. Uh, we have James Washington there at wide receiver. Get him locked up. O.J. Howard at tight end. I mean, you don't have to actually pay O.J. Howard that much. I'd rather get these other guys locked down because O.J. Howard is really only tight end two. And even though we are using Philly's playbook... Um, that's a lot of money to give to a guy that's not really playing. Sid Jones at corner, two-year deal. You take that? Nice. Can you still everyone else there? It's a pretty big drop-off. So I definitely want to come back on my lot of Ann Burgess. And then if we have a decent amount of money, maybe we'll let O.J. Howard hit the market and then reconsider bringing him back once we see all of the available options for improvements for our team for year five Super Bowl or bust. But who are we kidding? We don't need year five. We're going to win the Super Bowl this year. Right? And we did it. We actually almost... Tried to suck it away, but we held on 9-7 and seven to come second place in the NFCs. But we got the playoffs. We got the 12-4 and four Panthers coming off of a uh, must-win. Five touchdowns. Jordan Love. Four passing, one rushing. That's pretty damn good. Uh, looking at our stats. Actually, let's see. Did that wide receiver have dev trait? Please be superstar or something crazy. Ah, it's only a star for Jalen Burris, who's playing. He's confident right now. Got a plus-one morale boost. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Let's look at the stats. How did this 87 overall team finish 9-7 and, and sneak into the playoffs? Well, Jordan Love was immaculate. 39 touchdowns to four picks. Uh, he can't, I don't think he's going to be nine this year. Let's see. We're, oh, maybe not. I don't know if he had enough yards to get the automatic dev trade. But, I mean, come on, man. Get this guy a superstar. He's been unreal. Also chipped in three rushing touchdowns. So there's over 40 touchdowns. Jordan Love's been amazing. And I, I think right now, I know it's tough trading for rookie quarterbacks. We'll just go back to the point. If you were in your own individual franchise and you need a quarterback, Jordan Love is technically QB2. Just get a year in, maybe, when he's not classified as a rookie. Get into that second year where Aaron Rodgers is still the starter in Green Bay and trade for Jordan Love because he's amazing. You're seeing it right before you. 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns for Kareem Hunt. Uh, we had 1,012 for Burris, the rookie. 9-7 Hardman, 13 touchdowns for Philly Goddard. 6-2 and two James Washington. Defensively, Claiborne led the team in tackles. Uh, also, five and a half sacks is impressive. 100 tackles, 12 TFLs there for Blake Cashman. On the sacks front, nine and a half to Ron Payne. Seven for Montez Sweat. Interceptions maybe a little bit lower than what we'd like. We had the top 10 offense, number seven in the NFL. Defensively, probably top 15. 12, almost top 10. Both units. Aaron Rodgers in the MVP there. Jordan Love, runner-up at number two. NFC Office Player of the Year, Jordan Love. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, defensive Rookie. Defensive Player of the Year went to Devin White. Uh, offensive Rookie went to this guy. Great name. Howie O'Shaughnessy. Jalen Burge was the runner-up there. QB went to Jordan Love. Running back Josh Jacobs. Christian Kirk at wideout. Burris at number three. O-lineman went to Ramchick. Daniil Hunter. Tranquil, who's actually someone I want to target. He's technically a depth linebacker on the Chargers. Was one of our bigger misses of that fantasy draft. But uh, there you go, man. Claiborne making that list. Our linebackers have been playing well. So, made the playoffs. Let's get in. Let's play these moments against the 12-4 and four Panthers. Let's at least see what their team is. Anytime we do these rebuilds, I'm very interested to see what the, the identity of teams that we play. So, the Panthers have Joe Mixon and Daniil Hunter, as well as Ramchick, Roquan Smith, Justin Tucker, and Bobby Okariki. In comparison, we got Blake Cashman, Deron Payne, Chuck Gardner-Johnson, and Dee Ford. 
Uh, but I, we have the better quarterback. Advantage Philly with Jordan Love at QB. We should win this one. Let's go, boss. Let's get the job done. Let's get the win. Let's see four touchdowns, Jordan Love. Like what I've seen in the sim. Let's see the guy that's runner-up for MVP. All right, a lot of field goals. All right, getting field goals here. Didn't really mean to come in on 4th and 21. My apologies, everybody. But I will come in on a play every now and again once things start to smell a little shitty. It sounds like we're going to be, just for whatever reason, inexplicably unable to score touchdowns. So let's see if we can help him out here. We got Burris in the slot. Actually beat his man. And he draws a P.I. I'll take that. I'll take that because he wasn't getting there. A little too much sauce on it from Jordan Love. I like the fucking and chuck it offensive play style. I'm a, I, I, as the inventor of it, I believe uh, I appreciate that style. But sometimes it doesn't work. But sometimes if it doesn't work, you can still draw a P.I. Third down. All right, there's no time left. Okay, we're just going to act like no one saw that. Just going to act like no one saw that. Oh, that's probably why. It's going to be like a pick six or some sort of shit. Thank God. Ugh. Well. All right. Stop broken. Working as intended. Able to go down the red zone and tie this one up at 20. Didn't even need me. I'm not going to lie. Literally, I've come in for two plays, have an interception, and I'm able to draw a P.I. Not playing my best football. Looking a little bit rough. Do we have a chance? Can we get a defensive stop here? Need a nice D Ford sack. We can't get it. It will go down the field and make it somewhat, somewhat respectable. Who was their QB? Who did just work? Gardner Minshew just worked our team. Three picks, Jordan Love. I was I was responsible for one of those. But how did this happen? Ah, ah. So we do have some money. So for our final free agency Super Bowl or bust, I'm going to go all in on Oluku. And even though Davion Taylor just keeps going up dev traits, he's a magnet for it. It's still a 10-point upgrade and another X-Factor to add on that side of the ball. Also, with that $14 million bucks, I would love to be able to get someone like David DeCastro and just flex him out to tackle. Even though he's not a not a natural tackle. Um, 6'5", 316. Could get the job done, so I don't know if we'll be able to sell him on that. But we got a chance to land two big, real shiny free agents. We got both of them. So let's just go to this nonsensical draft. That doesn't matter. We're not going to get anybody, but maybe you can flex my draft muscles and get into your five. And when I was doing that, right, I, he didn't go up dev trade again. This game sucks. This is the worst Madden of all time. All right, I've never done this before. I straight up sim the entire draft. Did they do well? They did very well outside of the seventh round pick. We got a 73 D tackle Bobby Grant. We got a 73 tight end Alex Watkins out of Michigan. Actually looks pretty damn good. 82 catching, great athlete. We got a 66 running back with a hidden dev. Certainly at a Yale running back juggernaut. Running back you is what they call him of the Ivy Leagues. Got Nick Frost, wide receiver 67, getting that there with 94 speed. That's a hell of a pick. Good draft. Doesn't make up for the rest of this game being awful. All right, so let's meet the team, the final team, 89 overall. Started as a team of backups, has developed into... Let's be honest, one of the most underperforming teams, maybe, in the NFL, given the level of talent. Still no dev trade upgrade for Jordan Love. Um, no dev trades to be had on the offense. We're able to bring in David DeCastro, slide him out to right tackle. Hopefully that's a gamble that does pay off. But everyone else has developed fairly nicely. A chance for both Love and Kareem Hunt to go up into the 90s this season. Defensively, uh, I could have probably got an upgrade for D Ford, but I figured because he was so damn good early on, I just want to give him the right to ride this rebuild out. Rest of the D-line solid. Secondary, there's no dev traits, but the talent is there. Talent is there, baby. We got Olu Kuhn, Superstar X-Factor, pairing that with Blake Cashman. I think we're going to have one of the best linebacking cores in the NFL. Claiborne went from a normal to a star dev. Uh, and we also have, you know, a superstar dev here. And Davion Taylor just chilling as a depth playmaker. Maybe we could trade him, put him up on the trade block. I just don't really know. Like, I don't see what position we would even have a chance at upgrading. Like a corner, Maybe. Even then, like, you're not going to get much. 77 linebacker start up. You might be able to get an 80 corner, but that's not going to be any better than Sidney Jones or Pemberton. So we got to rock and roll what we got. Year 5, Super Bowl or bust, a team of backups. All right, let's do it, man. Let's just let's just top in now. Let's let it sim. 
Uh, I will say though, keep on suggesting different ideas for team builders. Obviously, with a the, the, you know, I don't want to say a challenge. The challenge is probably the best way to phrase it. A challenge like today, I wasn't expecting to have a juggernaut of a dominant team or anything like that. Uh, we were able to luckily add a lot of young players, so we didn't have to worry about drafting, you know, uh, instant starters every single year because a lot of the guys were just growing and developing every every little step along the way. But keep on suggesting your ideas because even I could not in Madden 21. Draft a team of the top backups in the NFL and win a Super Bowl. I don't know if you guys can do it. That's also something else you can take from these videos. It's like, well, maybe maybe if you're inspired, you could take what I did and see if you can do better than me. I was able to make the team a 90 overall. I was able to, you know, a bunch of these guys develop nicely. No, no one was shockingly with their development. A lot of them make sense. A lot of these guys were young players. But what did we even finish? Um, well, Jordan Love was good. Kareem Hunt was good. Dallas Guy was consistent. Uh, defensively, Blake Cashman was amazing. Absolutely amazing every single season. Uh, shout out to Deron Payne being really good. Ovalkun comes in, gets four picks as a, you know, mercenary. Get him for one year as a superstar X Factor. But, I mean, there you have it, man. Jordan Love got Offensive Player of the Year. Then he got QB of the Year. And all these things wouldn't go up dev trade. A lot of shenanigans. A lot of shenanigans. This is Madden 21 at its peak. And I get it, man. I don't want to be that guy. If I was watching content, I wouldn't be uh, super excited to watch a guy knowing that he's just going to crap all over the game. I've been trying my best. And more often than not, I can find a way to turn a positive spin on things and make the best cut. But every now and again, you're just going to get stuff like this where it's just... It is what it is. So thank you guys for watching. As always, leave a comment in the comment section below with different ideas for our Madden 21 Fantasy Draft Rebuilds. Subscribe if you're first time stopping by, working our way to 150,000 subs. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. It helps the video on the old YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys back here on the next one tomorrow. Peace out. Three fucking wins, man.